I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Jacob Gadakian, the founder of Tachyon Protocol. Jacob, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Hey, thank you, Ashton. It's really uh, great to be on your show today. Yeah, likewise. Great having you. I'd love if you could kick off the interview by explaining a little bit of the background issues that you saw throughout the blockchain industry and the security industry and how that led to you starting the Tachyon Protocol. Sure. So it's kind of interesting that Tachyon itself does not actually solve any blockchain problems. That's kind of been abstracted out. Um, it does uh, introduce a novel high speed payments feature. The payments in Tachyon are actually streamed in real time. Um, and that, you know, initially was not possible. In fact, we built a prototype in Solidity uh, for Tachyon and found that it just wasn't going to work on Ethereum. It wasn't going to be fast enough. We ended up partnering with vSystems and what vSystems did is actually created a new payment channel mechanism called Portal, which enables instant payments from stores of value that are kept on chain uh, that can be claimed by the recipient at any time. Um, so most of our, you know, blockchain engineering actually comes from the, the V system side and was really enhanced by the portal product. Um, now, on the side of security, uh, Tachyon, probably the, the biggest single problem that we're solving is the fact that most VPNs at present actually um, have a threat model of the VPN provider versus the user. So the VPN provider is a company, right? Mm -hmm. And that VPN provider uh, can be compelled into giving up information on its users. And we basically eliminate that piece of the threat. Um, Tachyon itself does not operate uh, any Tachyon nodes. And instead... Uh, you know, thousands of node operators, although currently it's more like uh, about 50 um, node operators run the infrastructure for the network. So there's mm -hmm. there's a lower threat to the user. And then on the business side of things, Tachyon is also more competitive because of its decentralized nature. Um, <clears throat> node operators build relationships with users and can establish you know their own brand in the ecosystem um and basically you know what we have is this payment technology that makes it very very easy for them to accept payments in real time mm -hmm. that's great so we've touched on a few different things here there's the vpn there's payments and now we're talking about you know data of users of the internet and the way that they're experiencing the internet having to go through vpns and having their data or their uh, you know, information with regards to their use of the internet, sort of at the mercy of central, more centralized VPNs, you know, and it can get very technical uh, with all these little different pieces. So I want to just take a step back real quick and talk about, you know, what this whole thing is. And it seems that it's almost like a decentralized internet protocol. <clears throat> As you say, <clears throat> you know, VPNs right now, they seem to be um, for, they're getting very popular, but for the most part, it was for power users of, of the internet <clears throat> and people who really cared about their personal privacy. Can you talk about as Tachyon continues to grow and, you know, what this decent, decentralized internet, as that continues to grow, how will that change the way that people browse the internet and, you know, pr put out their information on the internet as well? Sure. So th this kind of ties into something that I wanted to discuss uh, in a later point as well, but I'll, I'll kind of bring it up now. So the Tachyon network is building a distributed compute system that, you know, for all intents and purposes, is currently being fueled by the vast demand for VPN services. So when a node operator puts up a provider node that sells services to users, um, it also joins what's called a DHT, a distributed hash table. And this DHT, coupled with the encryption parts of the Tachyon protocol, 
allow machines on the tachyon network actually talk to one another and provide coordinated services so in terms of how this is going to change the way that people you know use the internet well in the very near term right they might be installing an app on their phone or their computer uh, we've had huge success with that we've uh, had 300,000 downloads so far uh, which keeps their traffic private okay mm -hmm. In the longer term, um, the same nodes that fuel that app are also going to fuel other services. Uh, distributed compute is, is one of those. Uh, another one would be distributed storage. So for a user who is publishing uh, in the future, you know, the Tachyon network will be actually an option for uh, their content storage needs. Um, so that that's that's part of how it is going to affect uh, user experience. Uh, maybe another thing is that we increase privacy, not only on the user level. We, you know, we have a, a very very strong encryption protocol that um, keeps communication secure between users, and also between nodes. So nodes on the tachyon network that are running the tachyon software can effectively collaborate in complete privacy and they're also anonymous node operators can can choose to reveal themselves uh or not you know the, the branding is really up to them mm -hmm. uh and and what that means is that you know kind of a byproduct of what we're doing is this massive distributed computation grid. And our, our mm -hmm. current strategy is just to fuel that with as many VPN customers as possible. Mm -hmm. That's great. And with this Tachyon network, you know, to use the Tachyon VPN services, do, do those customers need to be run node or do they have to have any technical experience uh, to be able to utilize the benefits of the Tachyon VPN? That's a great question. So users do not need to be running a node. In fact, right now um, in our, say, like alpha stage, Tachyon is free. Uh, anybody can go to the Google Play Store or the iPhone App Store, and they can download Tachyon to their device and, and use it. Um, and in, in terms of running a node, I guess I should touch on that just a little bit. We actually have a piece of software called the Node Manager uh, that runs on Mac computers. And the way you join the node network is you uh, load up the node manager, run a script on a Linux server of your choice, and uh, then that, that machine is then enrolled in the network. But certainly, you know, end users do not need to run a node at all. <clears throat> that's, that's great to know. And that obviously is going to lower the barriers to entry and show that shows why you have so much growth so far. Now, you touched on, you know, the node part and the... The fact that you can do staking on these nodes. Can you talk a little bit about you know the network, uh, its consensus mechanism, and then how people can stake and contribute to the network? Absolutely. So staking is going to go live later this month. And uh, one thing that I should actually let you know is, since Tachyon does not actually have its own blockchain, uh, while we do use proof of stake for security reasons, right? Uh, there is no consensus mechanism in Tachyon. The nodes uh, do not actually have to come to agreement on mm -hmm. any set of facts. Um, what the staking is there for is to ensure that entrants into the network are honest uh, and also to get access to the services of the, the app and marketplace. Mm -hmm. So once a user has staked on a node, uh, they are able to... Uh, earn session fees, so they're you know they also earn from staking, but the um, session fees are really um, well. It's I, I, maybe I'll include a little anecdote here. Um, I've been testing uh, placing nodes in different places and learning about the ideal strategy for that. Right, like so, at which hosting provider. Um, what should the bandwidth levels be like? What type of computer do you need? And um, I was able to optimize that by 20x. 
products. Uh, I started on very cheap VPSs and eventually uh, I reached a level where I was breaking one terabyte per month uh, on those VPSs, which was my limit. There were $5 a month VPSs and I you mm -hmm. know, could only uh, use a terabyte per month. And then I moved to uh, a data center that I'd done a lot of research on. They're called Hetzner. And uh, they have very good internet peering. Uh, what that means is they're highly connected to the rest of the internet. They've spent a lot of money uh, bringing in fiber optic cables and really optimizing their networks. Uh, and I went from serving a terabyte in a month to about a terabyte in a day. Um, so when, when touching on the, the issue of session fees, it is not, um, you know, in staking, right? It's like a level payment, right? If we, if we look at, say, uh, the Cosmos network or even the V-Systems network itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you would get a fixed amount uh, for your staking for providing security. Mm -hmm. On that level, Tachyon is exactly the same. On the level of session fees or session rewards, where you're being paid for internet traffic, Okay, you actually get paid in five megabyte blocks in real time by the user. On that level, um, you know, running a node is a little bit more like a service provider and nodes that are well placed will do extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly about optimizing to be able to uh, cover as many customers as possible. That's great. And that leads me to the next question about you know, this again, this difference between the decentralized internet protocol of the future and the way that ISPs and centralized servers sort of control uh, the internet right now. You know, as Tachyon continues to grow and people use this as a method of accessing the internet, is it true that you know certain you know ISPs will not be able to stop you from accessing the internet and, and free flowing you know to whatever part of the internet you would like? That's, that's, that's absolutely correct. Uh, your, your internet server service provider um, would not be able to block content because they, they can't actually see what's in your traffic uh, mm -hmm. when you're using Tachyon. Uh, Tachyon has, you know, first of all, encryption to shield your traffic, but then also the ability to, to shape your traffic as other protocols. So, for example, uh, if you wanted to visit a website using the HTTP protocol, um, Tachyon can make that look like it's SMTP email. Um, and there, there are a number of tools built into Tachyon to make it very difficult for uh, your ISP to, to block your access to anything and, and also to surveil it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. Uh, so, and you also, you know, as you mentioned, there's many tools in there and there's also an IPX wallet and you touched on this at the very beginning, but I do want to get to it before the interview is over about the payment solution, payment systems, you know, integrated into this decentralized internet protocol, you have a full payment network, uh, an identification network. Can you touch on the IPX wallet, the IPX token, the currencies and how that functions throughout the network as well? Yeah, absolutely. So... I integrating that wallet was was kind of one of the the key pieces of building Tachyon, and uh, that, that'll go live when the portal payment channel system goes live on V Systems, enabling the streaming real time payments. And uh, what it does, right, is when you open up the Tachyon app and begin to use bandwidth, those payments occur instantly. Um, so that you only pay for what you use as a user and as a node operator uh, you're always getting paid for traffic that's been used um, so it is a uh, you know really interesting and novel solution to payments i far as i know we're going to be the first live product featuring high volume streaming real-time payments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there have been some other attempts, for example, on the Lightning Network. Um, however, the portal system is actually much simpler. Uh, the Lightning Network requires a lot of additional infrastructure. 
uh, and users sometimes even need to run nodes, whereas Portal actually just exists in smart contracts on the vSystem blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that, that's a bit about the wallet in the app. Um, and additionally, just you know, kind of while we're on this topic, uh, anybody with IPX on their wallet is actually going to be able to very shortly uh, sign up for staking at uh, tachyon.eco mm -hmm. and uh, actually begin sponsoring node operators immediately. Um, so that's, yeah. That's yeah, that's great. And I was just going to ask you, you know, you have so many updates that are coming out in the near future here with the development. You know, what are the milestones that users have to look forward to? Okay, so... Milestones. All right. Um, probably the first and current largest is the launch of staking about the end of this month. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to bring the incentive system online for the node operators. And, you know, we, we expect that uh, given that one uh, user growth has been far larger than we expected, actually, like um, we, we've been amazed since we launched the software uh you know first it was a couple hundred uh then it was thousands and now it's three hundred thousand uh downloads of the app and if the current growth rate conti continues uh we're on track for a million sometime in june and as and kind of as that's going right the next Technical milestone is actually going to be uh, the launch of Portal on the vSystems platform and the ability of users to begin paying uh, node operators. Um, so that will happen late summer. And what that's going to do is just further enhance uh, the ecosystem. And of course, you know, the folks who uh, begun staking now are going to be really well positioned kind of to be service mm -hmm. providers. Um, later on, there are going to be a few performance and security enhancements. So currently, uh, when a Tachyon user connects to a Tachyon node, they are in a one-to-one -one relationship with them, uh, meaning that uh, the traffic is just moving from user to node. And, you know, we always thought that it would be more ideal to add kind of like a, a multi-path routing setup. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be coming online later this year. Uh, and, and what that will actually do is ensure that as a user, your traffic does not always come out of the same endpoint. Um, basically makes you harder to track. You know, mm -hmm. makes, makes it a lot more private. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of great updates coming. I'm looking forward to seeing the staking and the portal released. For the viewers, what's the best way for them to follow along uh, with Tachyon's updates and get involved with the community? So, you know, our website is tachyon.eco, and they can go there. But actually, you know, probably the, the best way that they can begin to get involved is to download the app on their phone or their desktop computer uh, and try it out. And, uh, you know, then if they go to the website, there are also links to Telegram and Medium and Twitter, and, you know, they can check it out and engage with us. Um, if they're interested in running a node, and I should say we're definitely, you know, looking for node operators who I would say that these are generally people with at least a little Linux experience. Um, they're looking to actually run a node. Uh, they can also contact me uh, at Gatakian on Twitter. And uh, I, I'm personally, you know, helping people to set up nodes. Uh, that's at G-A-D-I-K-I-A-N. Um, and lastly, uh, if they are looking to sponsor nodes and capture session rewards. Uh, they should head on over to the website and uh, look for details on the staking, which will be out shortly. Great. Very exciting. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. Jacob, thank you so much for taking the time to go through Tachyon with us. The growth has been great so far, and you know I wish you all the best in moving forward with this project, and let's follow up in the near future. Wonderful. Thank you so much.